Hey Ratbags, it's Jade. Welcome to the Valheim brand new update. Hilda's request is on the PTB. It'll be coming to everyone else very soon. If you're on the Xbox Insider Hub, you can go and check it out now. And if you click on betas, you can also try it out for yourself. It's a substantial update. Some of the patch notes that you'll first read, you'll think that it's mostly just quality of life, which it has got a ton of, which is definitely much needed in terms of controlling how you play Valheim, making it easier or harder. Of course, there is the trader itself, this is Hilda, and she's got a whole plethora of items to sell to you once you give her something she wants. So we're going to leave that to the end of the video, not to spoil things too much. Let's go through some of the other stuff that I think is worth pointing out. So much like the Valheim devs teased on Twitter, we are now getting world modifiers. These come with presets, so you can go ahead and just choose the preset, and it'll give you a rundown of all the different settings, what they will do. Make the game easier, make it harder, make it very hard and almost simulation-like in terms of having no map and no portal use. Or give yourself creative mode, make it an easier task to get through raids. Take any item you want through portals. There really is a huge amount of different options here. And like I said, if you just want to mess around with the world modifier presets, that's the easiest way to get into it. But the rest of the settings are fairly simple to understand. This isn't Ark or Conan, it's really, really easy. You can choose to have your world have no build cost. You can choose to have passive enemies that won't attack you until you attack them. You can, of course, choose to have no map. And you can also choose to have raids activated depending on what level you are rather than what your friend's world is or what game mode it is at the moment. You can increase your resources up to three times the amount or you can reduce it from one to 0.5 times the amount. You can use portals completely to take anything you want. You can turn some of the portals off, basically not being able to escape from a boss fight or use them if a boss is active. So no more taking on maybe the queen in the Mistlands and then being able to teleport back to base, gear up some more resources and come back and take her on. It solves so many of the things that people have wanted to see added to the game and people have felt they've had to use mods for. Now it's all at just the drop of a hat. This can be used on any world that you already have set up or a brand new one. There's just so many ways that you can play this game. Want to treat it like an RPG with unlimited build mechanics? Then go for it. Want it to be the most toughest game possible, increasing enemy health to three times the amount normally? That's what I think is roughly going on here with increasing the combat. Then you can do so. Valheim might be a two year old game at this point and a lot of pros will feel like it doesn't need to be made easier but a lot of players jumping onto it from Xbox and of course when it goes 1.0 there'll be a huge amount of new players joining it's up to them to decide how to customize and adjust it. There is a big warning when you start up the game still telling you that the best way to play is the vanilla way that the Valheim devs intended but it's always great to have options. There are now two upgrade benches for the Mistlands items that were kind of missing or a lot of players felt should have been in there. You've now got the press and this will be for the forge. And then you've got these weird dripping spooky candles and this is for the Golder table. So you can now upgrade your gear and your weapons to an even higher level. I'll have individual videos on how to craft some of this stuff as well showing all the other new items in the same video. There's now a barber station in the game and you'll be able to go ahead and customize your viking whenever you want. Although you will have to find the brand new trader first as you need something called the barber's kit to go ahead and craft it. So I'm hoping that they do find other ways or at least give us a chance to find traders. There is a chance you could go through a playthrough and not come across Hilda and that means you wouldn't be able to customize your viking at all. There's a nice little selection of brand new styles as well and let's hope that eventually we can maybe dye our hairs a little bit more crazy colours than just the regular ones we've got. There are now fireworks in the game. Why? Well, why not? That's what the developers have added and you can find these at the brand new trader. But only once you've completed a few objectives. So of course you're going to need a lot of gold coins to go ahead and buy stuff from Hilda. She'll have a selection of dresses, a sparkler brand new iron pit as well as the barber kit. You can have a little chill and sit down while talking to Hilda. There's plenty of spaces and places to sit down and you'll see her inventory expand as you complete her requests. Pay particular attention to the map that she has in front of her as that's going to reveal some things that we'll talk about towards the end. So you've got cosmetic items now to wear, a little cap and a few different tunics or dresses. 
Right now they don't offer any benefits other than just cosmetically, so it's good for servers if you play with a lot of people, you can have team games now and stuff like that, all without wearing the same armour. And you'll now see lots more hair sticking through different armour pieces and clothing as they've adjusted the physics of it. I'm hoping they're going to add or give some sort of buff or reasoning to get more of these clothing items, because at the moment they're just not really worth it other than that cosmetic reason. Give or take, you think about what you're wearing, it doesn't have to be a progression thing, we've already got the progression in the game, we know which armours to upgrade to get us. They have spoken in the past about having side armours which they implemented with obviously the tree swamp abomination set. So I don't think it necessarily needs to be armour, but these clothing items I think should offer some sort of buff, and I think the devs probably agree as well. So who knows, they may change it, or if not soon, maybe in the future. And yes, as I said, to expand your clothing options, you need to do a few things for Hilda. So snapping has improved greatly. You can now place a plethora of floor pieces down without having to get that perfect tiny little angle sometimes. There's basically a way that you can use either the Q or E to go through snap points and turn it from auto to manual. And if you're using a control pad, it's going to be the right stick or left stick buttons while you've got a hammer in your hand. And you can see all the different points that it does. It's an absolutely huge improvement, it will make life so much easier to definitely get used to tapping them keys or them buttons to hopefully get your building skills a little bit quicker. Lots of bug fixes and quality of life changes, you can now skip the intro completely when you start a new game. They've increased slightly the build range when you've upgraded with the workbench and the forge and the building area will now have a cylinder style area rather than a spherical. There's another brand new controller scheme added in as well, and you can now hide the HUD when you're using a controller on Xbox too. God Mode will now allow damage down to one health rather than taking no damage, and new console command Tombstone, which will create tombstones. And a few other commands only nerds need to know about, about overriding loot in certain areas by using item set, meadows, four, etc. But honestly, you won't need it. And that's pretty much it, other than what I'm about to spoil for you guys. So if you want to go and find the trader yourself and see what happens next, go and do so, and I'll see you later. Otherwise, let's continue and show you the brand new stuff that got added as well. So if you click on the brand new map in front of Hilda, it will show the location of a brand new area to go and explore, effectively a new dungeon. There's three different types of new dungeon also. These new dungeons are going to have mini bosses inside them as well. Now I use the command to show all of the locations and it does look like you get three of each. The Howling Cavern, Smouldering Tomb and the Sealed Tower. So the Howling Cavern you can find in the mountains, obviously just like a normal cavern where you normally find lots of ephemerae. The Smouldering Tomb will look like just a simple burial mound again that you can go through. The sealed tower is the one that looks definitely different compared to the others and you'll notice it's a massive giant tower and that can obviously be found in the plains. So the smouldering tomb will have typical skeleton enemies although they'll all be one star. You might find a little bit more of them than maybe normal but really it's about finding the special boss mini boss in here. The skeleton should emerge from some of the ancient coffins that you'll find. But eventually you're going to find this guy, Brenner. He is a formidable scary fire skeleton that has got a pretty powerful attack there that can set you alight obviously. You'll see also it does a fair amount of damage there, 31 per tick or so in terms of burning damage. And it's got a good amount of health so you're going to have to obviously take it on with maybe blunt force weapons. I'll be doing separate videos giving more detail about each one of these creatures and what you find in them but you get the idea. Just note that you can actually block that effect when they're doing that power move. Once it's dead, it will drop a special chest and you need to take this chest back to Hilda. It weighs a ton, a 200 weight. So make sure you've got either the belt from the trader or you've got a good way to dump all the other stuff off so you can take it. Doesn't look like it will disappear though. It looks like it might stay there. So you should be able to come back for it if you are simply overweight. If you do find the other two smouldering chambers, then you will necessarily get anything else other than one of these chests that you could use for decoration purposes, but you won't unlock any other new gear or items. Hand it to Hilda, obviously in your hotbar, and then just press up on the hotbar D-pad and you'll get a brand new access to new items and it will start to populate and decorate the area around it, which I really liked. I think it's a cool little effect. 
So the rewards at the moment are all cosmetic. If anything changes from the PTB, I'll leave it in the comment section or you'll see a revamp video anyway when the update goes live for everyone. You now get three extra dresses, three extra tunics in variety of different colors and they all cost 350 gold coins as well as the original stuff that you had when you first find Hilda which cost 250 gold coins. The scarf and the brand new fur hat will cost 200 gold coins. So the Howling Caverns seemingly look like just a regular cavern but it does look like it has a much deeper staircases that will take you down to encounter even more of the elves than I've ever seen before like literally there might be 10 or 12 of them inside just one of these. Again there will all be one star and just like regular caverns you'll find a whole bunch of stuff including obviously wolves teeth and lots of the actual fur. Now the first actual cavern I explored, I couldn't find the mini boss. The second one I did, oh boy, I came across him. It's pretty much the opposite of the cultists, i.e. they've got now frozen frost power instead of flames. So taking out the huge amount of old that are here as well, and then you had him to deal with. It will slow you down and yes, obviously make life very tough. You can see the cold debuff and the frost debuff up there. And it does obviously reduce your health as well when you get caught in the shockwave. Honestly, a formidable opponent, especially with all the other old floating around as well. It's going to be a tough one, this. So you may need to bring lots of fire imbued weapons always to obviously deal with the cold for this one. And again, I'll do a more detailed video on taking on this guy, but yeah, pretty, pretty badass. Obviously, expect him to maybe be weak against silver and, like I said, maybe fire arrows and stuff. But there you go, kill him, and once again, another chest will drop. Hand it over to Hilda again, and once more, uh, inventory will be expanded. It's important to state, lots of these items are cosmetic at the moment. You don't know if we're going to be changing or seeing anything with that happen, but it does look like the devs do know that players already probably want a bit more for reward than just maybe cosmetic items. To be fair, with all the different creatures and the resources you get from these particular min dungeons, you do get a lot of that stuff, which is great, but yeah, some extra kind of reward. So yeah, just a brand new set of new clothing, more mini capelets and lots of hats, and of course the same style with the dresses. Quite like this pirate's cloth you get, and yeah, you've got a nice luxurious hat. So the final one is probably the most interesting of them all. It's a huge tower in the plains, a parkour challenge. You will not be able to break it in. You'll have to actually climb until you get much higher and then are able to get through either a window or through the very top of the tower. I'm not too sure why that big massive hole was there, but it was. And yeah, literally you're gonna have to bring some wood to get yourself up to the very first platforms. And there isn't really a set path. You can see lots of them sticking out, but they're not necessarily gonna take you all the way to the top. So you do have to bring a lot of wood, hence why they made the build space like a cylinder now instead of a spiracle, so you can actually build up. You will probably have to place a crafting bench down at the bottom so you can start getting up to the top. Once there you'll have to deal with a whole ton of fuelings and yeah I really like this dungeon particularly. The boss is a bit enclosed where you'll fight him but on your way through the tower you'll basically come across multiple levels with these enemies but it's not going to get overwhelming. There's a ton of iron gates that will block enemies off from all just running up the tower and killing you so it means you can take a breather kill them one by one and then work your way down the next tower. I really like this idea and it seems like it's going to be maybe a sign of things to come in the Ashlands with the forts in future. Just smash through them and that's how you break your way through and then go down the stairs to the next level. As you saw there was a trap there as well, couldn't find out a way to trigger that so maybe I'm just missing something and you might even find them underneath some of the thatch sort of bed coverings as well so look out for that. You'll find some loot in chests as you normally would and you will come across a few shaming fuelings on some of these levels as well so you might need to take them out quick. You'll know you'll get to the bottom as it's a few more stairs and you'll face off against these two. Yes, shaming and fueling in harmony like pretty much Yoda sitting on top his biggest bravest boy firing huge amount of flame bombs at you in magic and then obviously having a little bit of an extra shield for his protector. Funga? Funga? Fungi? He's pretty formidable, does a huge amount of damage with swings from his axe as you can see. And yes, I was using god mode just to showcase this to you, but look out for proper legit guides in the future. 
The fire projectile seemingly threw me as well, so it wasn't just doing fire damage, it seemed to stagger me a little bit as well. It can probably do with a bit more space fighting inside here. It is rather enclosed and it's hard to dodge some of them attacks. So probably either need to be nerfed the cone of effect, maybe from the fire one particularly, or try and make or hollow out some of the bottom parts of the tower. Otherwise, you're probably going to do what I'm doing here, taking a breather in the stairways and then going back in. So obviously, once he's dead, you still have to deal with Zell, the little fueling mage on top of him. And he's still got a bit of life. In fact, he does pretty quick, fast attacks here, as well as obviously another healing one where he's going to do a lot of damage to you. He's not just simply helpless. So yeah, he's still got quite a decent health pool as well. Once you take him out though, again, you'll get the third and final chest. Like I said, you do get repeat chests from taking on the other dungeons. And instead of it being something you can use, it's going to be just more something for cosmetic reasons, which I'll show you guys in a minute. You will also find some more looting chests, so make sure you look in every corner on this tower once you're done. And pick up trophies. There should be a trophy drop from all of the enemies. And yep, you can place them chests on a little item stand. And then go ahead and put a smaller chest in front. Big shout out to Andrea, one of the Valheim devs, who popped into the stream and showed me this. It's a nice secret decorative way to hide some of your best gear, maybe. Obviously take the chest back to Hilda once more and again you're going to expand the inventory. And for me it meant I could then go ahead and get the fireworks from Hilda now. Although according to Erica, another Valheim creator, she had it when she first handed in the first chest. So that may change depending whether you get access to fireworks straight away or only after handing in all three. And again it opens up with more gear, more dresses and more tunics. Jumping up to 450 gold coins now. So really cool stuff. This update was always meant to be a larger than life quality of life update in terms of adding and improving the ways that you can play Valheim with some of the feedback they've received over the last couple of years about changing stuff like being able to take through portals, your gear and items. But adding these encounters I think is a great move. Obviously you might come across these naturally and I just think it adds a little bit more flavour. You get a full warning, they're more difficult than usual. It might not last forever in terms of content, but it is brand new content rather than just quality of life. Of course, we have got the Ashlands update to income as well, and there is going to be smaller updates still incoming between the large and bigger biome updates. It should be in terms of content, and let's hope they do add maybe just a bit more reward for completing these mini dungeons. Like I said, it does look like devs understand and took on board some of that feedback already, so it might actually happen. As soon as this update goes live for everyone, of course, I'll let you know. Look out for smaller in-depth guides for some of this stuff as well. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.